This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté. Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, Cynthia Wesley, and Addie Mae Collins. Those were the names of the four little girls who were killed 50 years ago this week, September 15, 1963, when the Ku Klux Klan bombed the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. The bombing came less than a month after the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Denise was 11 years old, Carol Cynthia and Addie Mae 14. Hundreds gathered in the nation's capital last week to honor their memory when lawmakers posthumously awarded the girls the Congressional Gold Medal. Well, today our guest is a woman who's often referred to as the fifth victim of the bombing, Sarah Collins Rudolph. She was 12 when the church was attacked, standing next to her older sister, who was 14, Addie Mae Collins. Sarah Collins Rudolph was hit with shards of glass, lost an eye, was hospitalized for months. Today, she continues to live in Birmingham, Alabama, where she joins us now. We're also joined by Adam Goldman. He's the Associated Press Pulitzer Prize-winning reporter, whose new book is just out, called Enemies Within, Inside the NYPD's Secret Spying Unit and Bin Laden's Final Plot Against America. Uh, but that's not why he's here. He's here because before he was at AP, he worked for the Birmingham News, and to this day he continues to correspond with one of those who are convicted of the Klan bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church. As we go from talking about terrorism and 9-11, we're talking about another kind of terrorism 50 years ago. Innocent people killed by a bomb that was planted in a church on a Sunday morning. Adam Goldman, if you could start by explaining what actually is understood about what happened on that morning, September 15, 1963. Well, there were a group of Klansmen who uh, plotted this uh, bombing um, in Birmingham um, at the time, in 1963. Um, Birmingham was going through a wave of bombings. In fact, its nickname was Bombingham. And um, these, these individuals got together, and they built this bomb, and uh, at about the authorities suspect that about 2 a.m. they put the bomb at the side of the church. Um, and Thomas Blanton, uh, one of the bombers who was convicted, with his car was seen uh, at, at the church and um, driving the car, and he, and he drove away. And the bomb went off. Um, there is some speculation that the bomb was supposed to go off while the church was empty. And it wasn't, in fact, uh, meant to go off while it was filled with people. But regardless, it did go off, and people were killed, and they were they were held responsible for that. The case uh, went unsolved for many, many years until this individual named Chambliss was eventually convicted in um, in state court, and he was put away for life, and he died. And then later, I believe in 1996, 1997, the FBI reopened this investigation. In fact, right at the time as Spike Lee was beginning this documentary, the FBI uh, reopened this investigation. I know that because I, I've, 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 I've got uh, the FBI's investigative files. I FOIA'd them. And they worked to solve this. Uh, they worked to solve this horrific crime, and eventually zeroed in on uh, on the two surviving bombers, uh, this guy named Bobby Cherry and Thomas Blanton. And they initially were going to squeeze Cherry to rat out Blanton, but these two old Klansmen weren't going to tell anybody. Uh, it had been so long; they weren't going to spill the beans about what happened. And um, eventually, the FBI found recordings sitting on a shelf in the Birmingham's field office, um, recordings of an informant they put in a car with Thomas Blanton talking about the bombing. And um, they managed to get the recordings digitally enhanced, and they used that, along with the testimony of the informant, um, to convict uh, Blanton. And eventually, Cherry was convicted, too. Cherry, they both were sentenced to life in prison, um, and then Cherry later died. So. For years and years, I've been writing bland letters. Uh, he only recently responded to me, and um, and I've been learning a little bit more about his life and, and who he was. And um, where is he in prison? He is in St. Clair County, uh, Alabama, in a, in a in a place called Springville, uh, in a little town called Springville. And in these letters, he 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 expresses some uh, some regret that. That, that four little girls had died, that there was a loss of life. But he is, he is insistent that he didn't carry this out. And in fact, he's innocent. Um, so 
And yet you say he is unrepentant. Yeah, he's unrepentant. I what mean, does that mean? Well, despite all the evidence, despite all the indications uh, that he did this, and this was actually ferreted out in court, and he was convicted, that he refuses to acknowledge his role in this. And, you know, I thought about why, why would you, ref why, why wouldn't he just come clean? Why wouldn't he just tell the story? Because what's fascinating about the 16th Street bombing uh, is we still don't know really what happened. We have an idea what happened. You know, we think some guys, some Klansmen built a bomb, they put it in the car, and they put it next to the church, right, and the bomb went off. But nobody who participated in that event has ever told the true story of what happened. And Clanton and Blanton is the last individual alive who can tell us why they did it, how they did it, when they did it, and it did in fact, did they mean to kill, did, did in fact, was their intention to blow up that church. Mm. Um, Sarah Collins Rudolph, you're with us from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, you are a survivor of that church bombing when you were 12 years old. Your sister, Addie Mae Collins, uh, died at the age of 14. You were with her. You lost your eye. Can you describe your other injuries? Um, what else happened to you? And also, what Birmingham was like, as Adam was saying, people described it as Bombingham. Oh, yes. Uh, I have had injury in my left eye. I have had glaucoma for years where I have have to take pills, I mean, pills, and also drops uh, in my eyes every day. But uh, last June, they operated on it and put an incision in my eye to drain the fluid because my pressure has been up for a long time. And also, yes, Birmingham was, uh, it was a way of life back there then. We would hear bombs going off. And we would see the police beating blacks with billy sticks and water holes. And, and uh, it was just a terrorist place, really, to live in. But uh, we stayed. We wanted to leave, but we just didn't have the money to do it, to go. So uh, things are a little better now. So. We are still here in Birmingham. You went to the Birmingham City Council last year for help. Uh, your husband asked for help in covering your medical bills. Uh, what was the response? At first, they said, go to, go to the county. See, we stay in the county part of Birmingham. Go to the county because they don't do things like that here in the city. But anyway, uh, the uh, city council people said, well, we can help her. It, they, they do it all over. Uh, in other cities, they, they get funds to help people that have been in terrorist act. He said, we can do it here. But uh, when uh, they offered me something, it wasn't what I had expected because it was very little. Because, you know, during these 50 years, I've suffered a lot. And I just wanted to let them know that it was time for restitution because the city was involved in all this. The, the fire department, the police department, they was involved in, in all the uh, terrorist act that was going on in Birmingham. Cause during that time, we couldn't, we couldn't call the uh, city police and ask for help because we weren't going to get any help since they was involved. Um, I wanted to ask Adam Goldman, you have just written a book um, after the September 11th attacks and how the police in New York deal um, with investigating terrorism, and you're very critical. But I want to go to this issue of terrorism. What is defined as terrorism and what isn't? As a person yourself who investigated after September 11th and investigated the 16th Street um, uh, church bombing in Birmingham 50 years ago. I mean, this was what the Ku Klux Klan was doing in Birmingham. This was terrorism. They had a political agenda. They didn't want to see the Jim 
quo laws, uh, you know, essentially rolled back. They wanted to make sure that blacks remained segregated. And, you know, we forget this, but this was, for the people living in Birmingham, especially for the black community, this was a reign of terror, literally. I mean, there were, I remember one year, I think it was 1963, I mean, dozens of pipe bombs were set off across the city. I mean, it was a campaign of intimidation. And the blacks living in Birmingham, they couldn't trust the police. They couldn't trust the police. I mean, the police were infiltrating their organizations the same way that they were doing now in some respects. Um, then it was because they were black um, and because they wanted certain rights. Uh, but you know, the level there 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 are certain level there are certain similarities what we see today in Birmingham then with the Birmingham Police Department and the NYPD today. There is a level of mistrust. There, in the community today, just uh, as there was among minority communities in Birmingham. They couldn't trust the people who were sworn to protect them. And then the issue of compensation. I mean, here you have uh, Sarah Collins Rudolph, who lost her sister, who uh, lost her own eye, uh, was deeply injured. Um, the con Congress, the delegation goes down and honors um, the community, the families, with the Congressional Medal of Honor. But in terms of help, for example, for the survivor, Sarah Collins Rudolph, she has not seen it. No, and that's extraordinary itself because after the Boston bombing, right after the Boston bombing that we just went through, the 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 the, the community rallied. I mean, people came together and they gave these bombing victims. You could go online and you could pledge. And I was watching it. It was just extraordinary. One couple, you know, within days they had raised a million dollars, a million dollars, you know. And that's 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 a, a stain on the, on the legacy of, of Birmingham, and they know this that the community didn't come together. Everybody didn't come together after this bombing and make sure that you know the people who were injured or that were were, were were taken care of. Uh, you uh, had been denied compensation. Um, initially, the congressional gold medal wasn't going to. I didn't include you. Do you feel as if history has forgotten what happened to you? Uh, yes, I feel like they have forgotten and very, they weren't really concerned about what happened to me because I'm still suffering. I have a piece of glass still in my good eye and also I have cataract and I have a piece of glass still in my stomach and I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and I've been going through a lot and just getting up in the morning I had to go and clean houses just to make money. Like yesterday I should have been uh, resting, getting rest from what I went through on the weekend but I had to go get up at six o'clock and still go to work when uh, if there was money that was that had been given to me I wouldn't have to do this so I feel like I, forget, I have been forgotten. Gotten because all of, I know the four girls should get all the praises for, because they died, they was killed. But uh, I'm still here suffering. I'm still suffering from that bomb. And uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is, is something that I've suffered with and I look like I just can't get over it. And right now, my, uh, I, my husband, he, he's, would pay for my medical bill because he had insurance uh, at the place that he worked, but he retired and I don't have any, any insurance now. So uh, I just don't know when my, when my next uh, 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 check up is going to be in November. I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but I, I just thank God though that I'm alive because if it had not been for God, uh, I would have, you know, been killed myself. So I just, Want to let the people know that I give him all the praise, and, and I believe one day, uh, one day, it's gonna come, and, and God gonna do it. The money will come. Sarah Collins Rudolph, what is your message to the people who carried out this attack, that took your sister from you, that killed four little girls, that wounded you and others, that changed Birmingham, Alabama? My message to the people is that we can all love one another. We don't have to hate one another because of race. We can just get, 
get together and, and have peace in this world because uh, God's words say, you know, we, 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 he, he gave us peace, he, and we should have peace with one another. It, it don't hurt, you know, violence. It hurts, and it leaves you uh, like the bomb left me. I'm not the same anymore. So they just got to realize we can love each other. We can love people all over the world because we are all a human race. Has anyone reached out to you from the Birmingham government or even when the congressional delegation came down? I believe it was the House Speaker, John Boehner, who awarded the um, Congressional Medal, um, to talk to you um, about compensation, uh, something we have seen over and over again when these terrorist attacks happen, from the Boston Marathon bombing uh, to 9-11. Uh, no, I haven't had any, anyone to talk to me about in a conversation yet, but I'm just hoping soon that they will because uh, it's really overdue. You know, it's, it's 50 years now, and uh, I've, I've suffered, and yet, like I say, people are not concerned. They're not concerned like they ought to because when they offer me the little money that they did offer, they wanted me to speak four times for it. But I, like I say, I was in the bombing. And why should they set up something for me to speak four times when they have known all along that I was injured and I was badly injured? It wasn't something that I scratched. I had to have my eyes removed, my right eye removed because of this attack. And uh, it don't, it really don't feel good at all. You, you being looked over, like they saying, well, you, you didn't, you didn't die, so don't expect anything. What do you but mean I you were expected to talk. talk? What do you mean you were expected to was, talk? They wanted me to speak four times about the bombing, four times, and I was gonna get uh, uh, what you call uh, have somebody to coach me, and I, I didn't need to be coached. When you go do something like that. It rings in my ears and, and in my mind all the time. You know, what? what's next? What's, what's next? Because it's, it was a scary thing, and, and I still jump when I hear a loud sound. So I'm suffering every day. I, I had the scars on my face. And also, I tried to live, but, you know, living like uh, I live where I shouldn't have to really just suffer for anything. And people like the man was saying, people around the world, uh, what was in the marathon bomb, they get, th they get money for their injury, but I haven't yet got anything, and I suffer every day. And also my sister, we can't even find her remains. I don't know where her remains. We wanted to move my sister to a, a uh, new another cemetery, but when they exhumed her body, it wasn't there, her there inside the uh, casket. It was somebody with, with false chief, and we don't know where Addis remains today. It seemed like people uh, weren't even concerned about that. So I'm just wondering, uh, I look at Birmingham, and they say they changed, but Birmingham, they got a long way to go. Sarah Collins Rudolph, I want to thank you for being with us. Um, Sarah Collins Rudolph did survive the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, September 15, 1963, 50 years ago, that killed her older sister, Addie Mae, who was 14 years old, and three other little girls. Um, Sarah Ru Collins Rudolph has been referred to as the fifth little girl. Uh, she was hit with shards of glass, lost an eye, was hospitalized for months. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté.